who are the beings we meet when we die. For a long time, Earth has been oppressed under a heavily controlled prison grid that keeps souls trapped and enslaved on this planet. The parasitic beings that run the prison system are not only the dark entities known as Archons and Reptilians. They are also entities who pose as angelic and seemingly loving beings of light. When most people die, they experience moving through a tunnel where they meet beings of light known as the Lords of Karma. They are perhaps the worst violators of free will, and need to be exposed. To begin with, they are responsible for forcing people to reincarnate over and over and over again. In the free universe, outside of the Earth's prison grid, a being is free to incarnate onto any planet they choose. Nowhere in the process is a hierarchical group of manipulative beings like the Lords of Karma present. The primary tool the Lords of Karma use to manipulate a being into accepting repeated reincarnation on this planet is the life review. When a person's body dies, they move out into the astral realms and begin to shed most of their previously held identity. If this process were allowed to occur without interruption, the true light of that being would emerge from within them and release layer upon layer of limiting beliefs generated in that incarnation. However, within the prison system, what happens is the Lords of Karma intercept that being just as their light is starting to emerge from within and surround them in a dazzling display of colorful external light. This is why most people with near-death experiences report going through a tunnel of light. The dazzling outer display distracts the being and hypnotizes them through frequency entrainment and activation of any and all religious programming that being had been exposed to during their incarnation. The Lords of Karma and other members of the False Light Hierarchy such as the Archangels and Ascended Masters will often be present in the background during this process. As the individual is filled with a feeling of universal love and connectedness, they are told that this feeling is coming into them from the external beings of light that surround them. However, this feeling of universal oneness and love is actually emerging from inside the person and is being reflected back to them by the Lords of Karma. The individual doesn't have any time to reflect on what is happening because they are quickly moved into the life review phase of the process. They are shown a little movie of their life which focuses only on the disappointments, unfulfilled desires, painful experiences and hurtful actions the person experienced during their life. Through this biased and manipulated life review, the being is made to feel bad about their life, which is exactly what the Lords of Karma want. They tell the person that even though they failed at so many things in their life, they will be given a chance to go back one more time and get things right in a new incarnation. The person is then grateful at this chance for redemption and accepts the agreements the Lords of Karma present them with to incarnate again. After agreeing to reincarnate, the person is then sent to a heavenly realm in the middle to upper astral realms to await reincarnation. This realm is nicely decorated with simulations of nature, lovely views, and a staff of beings who pose as guardian angels who make sure those beings go back to Earth when their time comes. Of course those guardians are actually parasitic sheep herders tending to their flock and there is no allowance for people in this realm to go elsewhere. As if the content of the person's unhealed wounds, painful regrets, and unfulfilled desires isn't bad enough, they are presented with an even more brazen deception. Karmic Transference The person is shown what they are told is their own past life where they committed horrible crimes. They are told that they need to continue incarnating into adverse and difficult conditions in order to pay off that bad karma. In reality, the life they are shown is not their own. It is the actions of some other being closely aligned with the Lords of Karma who made pacts with them to avoid taking energetic responsibility for their actions. Some of that criminal being's malicious energy is then projected onto the individual who is being tricked into believing they were once that horrible criminal. The person then takes agreements to pay off the bad karma. This is done to coerce the person's agreements to reincarnate and take responsibility for crimes they did not commit, ensuring that the person's next life is going to be filled with undue hardships. This karmic transference allows those dark entities aligned with the Lords of Karma to avoid repercussions of their own actions, coerced soul contract agreements. 
One more very important aspect of the agreements that are forced upon people by the Lords of Karma are the original soul contracts that the people coming into the prison grid are forced to make in order to gain entry into the system. Many of us came from the free universe to help dismantle the prison system from within, and the Lords of Karma imposed an extensive list of coerced agreements upon these free souls in order to limit their effectiveness. These entry agreements also contain clauses that allow for unspecified hardships to be leveled against a person during their incarnation, including but not limited to, birth to bad parents, physical abuse, sexual abuse, psychic attacks, etheric implantations, dream manipulation, relationship issues, health problems, financial problems, physical abduction, lack of self-worth and much more. Some of us negotiated more fiercely than others and were saddled with fewer of these pernicious agreements, but no one came in unscathed. Regardless of how many coerced entry agreements we have, it is important to remove all of these agreements in order to get clear and proceed with our chosen tasks of healing and awakening others, as well as pulling apart the prison system from the inside.